Okay, welcome to another Graphics 2 tutorial. Um, my office chair is extra squeaky today, so you'll be enjoying that auditory sensation the entire time, I'm sure. Uh, anyway, today I want to kind of cover some of the brush effects tools. Um, there's a lot there, and I think that this button kind of gets ignored. Um, I guess one of the most important things, like I said, is just knowing the F1 key uh, and how to get into this will give you basically control alt and B is how you'd bring this up. Uh, you'll see the other options for all the other tools inside. Of course, we've covered rotate, uh, X and Y flipping, I believe. I don't know if I ever said you can rotate by 90 with the Z key. Uh, anyway, uh, I plan to demonstrate all of that stuff today. So let's begin by using the period key to grow the brush a little bit. I'm going to do an R. It's a good, uh, good letter for somebody's first name. There we go. And I'm just going to take the brush of that by left clicking and dragging. It'll fill in that box it cuts out with the background color, leaving us just the R. So let's go back into the brush effects menu. Of course, X is going to flip, um, flip it horizontally. I can hit it on my keyboard. You get the same deal. Y on the keyboard is going to go vertically. Like it said, Z will rotate it in increments of um, 90 degrees and shift I believe in Z is 180 degrees. So you have these basic um, rotations and mirrorings. Stretch will, I guess I can demonstrate these. Stretch will basically, you, you put the uh, cursor down where you want it, hold the left mouse button and you can kind of stretch it to any proportion. Um, oops. So we'll go down to, and I, I believe you right click to commit to those. Distort, uh, I'm going to actually put this on the spare page for a second because, stop that. Hit tab and go back. Wait, oh, I'm still distorting. Fine, commit to it. Um, what I'm, I'm going to trash this spare page here. I'm going to go back. And undo so I get this back. I'm going to delete this R and grab this as a brush again so I have my. Okay. So, um. Oh, that's not what I want to do. One second. Bear with me. Or is it what I want to do? Uh, you can always right click to restore your brush, by the way, over there. I'm going to put it down on my spare page and I want to do like we're filling a billboard with that uh, R. So I'm going to create like a one point perspective type of deal. Um, probably everybody's seen this kind of thing in art class. I'll just create basically something to draw to here. Um, I'm going to create a... I'm going to hold shift and you can see if you hold shift you get it kind of snaps to different angles and lines. So I'm going to do that and I'm just going to create like a billboard by using our old friend one point perspective. I'm using this uh, cross as the horizon here in the middle and then I'll zoom in. This is more involved than I was planning, but I want to want to show something here. And then we'll hold the shift key again to get this drawing, you know, snapping in. Okay, now we're going to take that R and we're going to put it on this billboard. I'm going to zoom out all the way. So we'll go to our spare page again, hitting the tab key. I'm going to grab this as a brush. Um, I'm going to actually before I do that, let me get it a little bit more precise. Okay. Because we want to make it nice and snug inside that. So now we'll hit tab over here. And I want to fit this brush inside here so it looks in perspective. You can make signs this way, I guess. Um, so we're going to go over to brush effects. And I'm going to go distort. I'm going to put this thing down there. And now we have these little grabby handles here. So we can grab them and place them in the positions of our uh, trapezoid for the one-point perspective. And this is just an example. You do this kind of stuff in Photoshop, I guess, all the time. And now our R is like in perspective with this one-point trapezoid we've created. So that's kind of neat. And then you right-click to commit it and left-click to paste it down, I believe. So there you go. You could do a whole sign with your name in perspective if that's the art project you wanted. So I'm going to trash this. Uh, that's not what I wanted. Let me.
delete this brush and the next part I want to kind of talk about is the handle um, sometimes when you're drawing uh, let me make a new brush and I'll make it some weird squiggle I guess it doesn't have to be an R let's say that you're just making some weird shape like this let me grab it as a brush okay you've got a shape like this and you want to put this all the way against an edge or something well the problem let me hide this real quick you want to put it against an edge or something and, and the problem is is because the handles in the middle you can't get it far enough over to position it where you like it well this is where this um, handle at, handle option comes in handy because you can grab it this way and you can push it much further over now you click that again you can grab it from the top here and you can push it much further down let me hide this you can push it much further down now so when you're messing with brushes that's something that's kinda nice too because you you can pre pre position them with much more precision if you reset the handle sometimes so that's an option of course clicking the center puts it back to the default position okay and the last aspect are these recolorize and get brush color options these are used when you want to mess with the palette on another on the spare page and then uh, remap the colors back to what they would be down here so one example actually the first example that I kinda stumbled across needing this feature is um, when I was wanting to draw a nice chrome looking gradient sphere or skyline it's hard because if we go into the gradient tool and we right click this you can see the go if I wanted to go from one color to another I can only go to adjacent colors but if you mess with the palette in the spare page it's a separate palette you can rearrange the orders of things you can draw what you want uh, with gradients and then you can come back and remap it so let's take a look at how that works the first thing I'm going to do is go into the spare page by hitting a tab key or of course there's uh, uh, going over here by left clicking this okay so what I want to do is oh yeah I said I was going to do a chrome sphere let's trash this R here um, so what we need to do is we need to first of all look at our palette with a P key or you could go down here if you can't remember which is the palette and I said I wanted to go and create a nice uh, blue gradient that goes from one blue into another of course since the gradient tool only works with adjacent colors I need to remap some of these colors okay so I'm gonna go with this dark blue and I'm gonna put this lighter blue right in underneath it so I'll swap that one and this one and let's see how these look lined up as a gradient and I don't like that one too much so I'll go from here and I'll swap with this let's see how these look oh what did I do that wasn't very smart I'll swap that one with this one that's uh, a little bit saturated, I think. I'll swap that one with this one. See how this looks now. Much better. Okay, so now I'm going to begin doing the uh, implied grass. Of course, we're going sky to grass. So we're going to start doing... Is that brown or is that... Oh, it's more, it looks more brown. Uh, I want kind of a nice dark green. And I'm using the colors I have. I could map. I could make new colors, but when we remap we could either push those new colors into our palette or it would try and find closest ones depending on which of the two options we chose so I'm gonna go with this one copy or actually swap with this and we'll begin doing our green swap that one with this how's that look yeah it's not too bad now I need a brighter green swap there yeah that might be a little bit too bright let's take a look at this that's eh, a reasonably okay implied skyline it's not great so we've messed our palette up down in this range if we go back to the original palette you see it's it's a separate palette on the spare page so what we want to do is now we're going to draw our oh we need to right click this and actually set our gradient which is going to go from here to there um, of course yeah a little more mixing Okay, so now let's draw kind of a chrome sphere looking deal. Uh, I don't like that one. Let's redraw it and make it smaller. There we go. I mean, 
yeah, you could do much. I would put a little more white in, even down there, but you can see that that works. So now if we grab this as a brush, I'll move back to the original image. from the sp We're on the spare page now, remember. And you'll see, oh, well, what happened? It's using these indexes, or the ones we changed over here. So it's fine over there. But then we get over here, and it takes those colors, and they map to something else. Well, since we've used colors in this palette, what we really want to tell the program to do is take and find the colors from the spare page and remap them to the indexes on, the, on these colors here. So if we go into the brush factory, we can just click uh, recolorize and boom, there you go. And it doesn't harm these down here. This one is still kind of messed up, but it, it actually allows you to make changes in the palette over here and then come over here and remap those colors. Well, that's all good and fine, but what happens if we have a color that that one doesn't? Let's take and I'm going to use this pipette to sample this blue. Let's say that I'm going to make this, I don't know, we'll make it a color that's real obviously different. Uh, actually, yellow might be, yeah, we'll do kind of a yellowish. Okay. So now if we if we click OK, now we've added, an, actually, I, I want to kind of make sure that this color is not in our palette already, so I'm going to make it real different. So now we have a color in our palette that's clearly not going to be in the other palette. So if we brush, the, if we use the brush, we hit Tab, and we go to Remap Colors again, or Recolorize, it tried to find the best it could, given the colors that we gave it. Is it an exact match? No. It's much, much more peachy color over here. So let's delete this brush. But you can see how it, um, basically, it tried to find the closest color it could without destructively modifying these. In fact, if we click here, we can see that it's it went into the sand sandish color here. But if you want to insert the, if you want to go from the spare page and you want to insert and trample and use this color in your palette destructively, it will do that too. What we do is we grab this, we go in here. Of course, you know, it's changed because it's remapped to these indices and we'll go get brush colors and that will destructively put it in. And you can see, let me delete this brush, I'm going to use the back tick and I'm going to grab this and I'll draw these two colors side by side. You can see they're actually different colors. I'll use a back tick and grab this and you can see it's actually destructively inserted this from the spare page in this now. So that's what you need to have in mind when you're changing and, and modifying the palette on one side. If you want to keep the palette you have and try and find the best match with what you've done on the spare page uh, recolorizes your option. If you want to insert into your palette the missing or different colors then get brush colors will do that for you but it will destructively add that into your palette. So I think that's where I want to leave off for today. I feel that um, the brush effects or yeah the brush effects um, color modifications are very useful but it's kind of a matter of they're not super intuitive and in how they work so I just kinda of wanted to demonstrate that for you too. Did I did I do outline? I don't know if I did outline or not. I think I did. Anyway outline uses the foreground color and draws an outline around the current brush shape so I think I did that. Did I do that? Well I can demonstrate it real quick. Sorry um, my old timers is acting up. <laughs> uh, anyway, I think I did that, but I don't know if I did outline or not. Anyway, we have an R here. Let's say we want to put a yellow. I, I've shot this video twice because I screwed it up once. Let's say we want to put a yellow edge around it. Uh, brush effects, outline. Now we have a yellow edge. Okay, so I hope that helped. Um, biggest thing to take away, I think, the thing that you'll use the most is probably these recolorize and get brush color options and the handle stuff. So I uh, hope everybody has a good day and keep doing art.